Cool. So it's two o'clock, and uh, I think it's about time for to get started. Just to check quickly, can everybody see the slides? If you can't, um, drop a note into the comments box. If not, then uh, I'll get going. Um, we may have a few people joining slightly later, um, but it, it should be fine anyway because we're just going through the introductions for now. Um, so just to say good morning, uh, I'm Kieran Porter from Microsoft, one of the Further Education and Skills Business Managers. Um, I've probably met quite a few of you already, um, and you know my counterpart as well, uh, Mike Morris. Um, so I guess today really, you know, I just want to thank you all for joining. Um, it's a great opportunity to hear from, you know, a Further Education customer and their experience with uh, a link implementation. And we've got Matt Greening here from North Harts College. Are you there, Matt? Yeah, I'm here. Fantastic. Thank you very much for joining. And then also we've got Mark, Chris, and James from Rizual. Are you there, guys? Yes, good afternoon, everybody. Hello. Fantastic. So thank you very much for organising this great webinar. Um, you know, it's a really great opportunity uh, for us today. Just to know, we will be recording the webinar today for anybody who wants to re-watch it or pass it on to another college or person who couldn't make it. We're going to mute the audience um, or already have during the presentation. So if you do have any questions, feel free to drop them into the comments box and that we'll try and answer them as we go along. Um, so yeah, that's fine. And, and just before I hand over, you know, I just, uh, I just want to really discuss why Link can be quite important to a college. Um, you know, I think at the moment the general view is that for education, um, you know, is way behind the trend with technology compared to schools, compared to universities, and you know, comparing that with the recent Feltag report that highlighted, uh, you know, government expectations that ten percent of learning, uh, you know, should be online by the end of the year, um, with that increasing to fifty percent by twenty eighteen. And also the increasing budget cuts across education, which has led to reduction in IT budget and, and staff losses as well. You know, we really are facing some challenging times. So really, you know, what this means as a college, you need to sort of look at how you can expand and improve any, anywhere, anytime learning and the learning experience for your teachers and staff. And, you know, Link can be a key platform for your college to help with communication between students, information between teachers and can be used as a teaching platform that will uh, integrate with Office 365 um, that we give to education for free um, as well as the, the rest of the Microsoft stack. And I think it's important to look at Link as more than just a PBX replacement because it can do a lot more and you should really look at how it can trans transform the experience students have at colleges while also saving you money and helping towards the online learning piece as well. Um, and that's pretty much it from my part and, and the startup. So really now I'm going to pass over to Mark Potter from Rizual and they'll be running the webinar today. And as I said, any questions, put them into the comments box and we'll uh, answer those as we go across. Cheers, Mark. Brilliant. Thank you, Kieran. And, uh, and, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, really appreciate your attendance. Um, and it's clear to see from the webcasts we run on behalf of Microsoft and our own webcasts that, that, that Link is a very topical subject at the moment. Uh, you can see from the attendance this afternoon um, how popular and attractive this subject is. So uh, today, hopefully, we're going to um, highlight some of those reasons and um, bring out probably three different areas. One, the technical agility that it brings, the cost savings, plus also meeting a a college of uh, today's future needs regarding either student experience or driving that uh, additional revenue streams that the college has to uh, has to look at these days. So as Kieran said, uh, we're really pleased to have uh, Matt Greening with us today. So Matt Greening is the head of IT of North Arts College. Um, one of a recent um, example installation that, that Visual completed last summer along with uh, Swindon College. Um, also joining me on the call this afternoon is James Brewster. James is a uh, senior consultant from our UC and messaging practice. Uh, Link being um, his specialised subject, and Link has uh, and, and James has been integral with a lot of the uh, strategic planning and installations in our colleges. So. Um, during the, um, the, the the presentation this afternoon, James will take you through link and potentially we can go as technical as the audience will want. We, we you know we would like this 
webcast to be collaborative and for people to shout of any questions so um, if you want to do that via the message box as we go we can pick them up or maybe maybe it is best that we leave them towards the end uh, but James can get to quite a technical detail if that's what's needed um, also joining me on the call we have Chris Morgan and Chris Morgan is from uh, the education team and Chris will be uh, fronting this campaign moving forward so uh, so let's just go look at the agenda today. So as I said, so uh, I'm going to just go through some introductions of visual and positioning of the technology in FE uh, and what we're seeing today. And then I'm going to hand over to James, who's going to talk about our, so a couple of recent installations at colleges and um, also bring in Matt's view of um, the, the benefits and reasons and um, you know how it potentially changed um, um, the way North Hearts College uh, viewed IT and, and, and used the, the technology. Uh, we're also going to look then into the more commercial aspect, driving cost out and the, uh, the efficiency benefits. Before we get into maybe more of a demonstration of the, the client itself, just make sure everybody is aware of the, the agility and the features of a, uh, of a link installation uh, and also talk about the integration um, with the rest of the Microsoft stack, which is key. Finally, um, we're going to talk about how we can help identify the cost savings uh, with the visual value assurance um, uh, initiative that we would like to offer uh, as a free of charge um, engagement with all colleges that do uh, attend this webcast. So we'll cover what um, the next stages are, what the offer is from visual to everybody attending this, uh, this webcast. So. so there we go. So moving, so moving on, if I can just spend, take a minute to position visual. I can see um, from the attendance that some of you do already know us, um, but if I can just take a minute to position visual and um, our, our, our portfolio of services. So visual is a pure Microsoft services company. Um, that is all we do. Um, we're 100% Microsoft and we're what's known as a tier one platform partner. What that means and the value that brings is that we have a wide capability across the Microsoft stack. And again, that will become apparent during this webcast that Microsoft is a platform of technologies that is there to integrate. You know, you shouldn't look at a certain technology in isolation because you'll lose 20, 30 percent of some of the value if you, if you don't consider the, the, the platform as a whole. So the business is split into two main divisions. We have managed services, uh, which is support. So, you know, the support of a new environment such as Link is key. And that's something that I'm going to ask Chris to cover towards the end, uh, how we support new installations. Then um, in the consultancy side, we split into business consulting and technical consulting. Business consulting is where we drive the strategy transformation type conversations, how we align IT to a college's uh, business objectives. So it's a different type of engagement. In the, in the technical, we are split into those four practices that you can see on the screen, and that's what really gives us this wide capability. So um, today we are focusing on the UC messaging practice of, uh, of visual. So what are we seeing today in the, uh, in the sector? Conversations with colleges these days are falling into, well, I would have said two, but there's potentially a third that is starting to happen. And Link is integral to, to, to all these conversations. The first one is a value for money conversation. As we know, colleges uh, are being asked to do more with what they have or potentially even less. And a main element, um, element of a conversation is how we take the college forward, but how we also drive cost out of a current IT environment. So traditionally, that can come from looking at traditional telephony uh, installations, um, traditional PBX installations when they're up for renewal. Um, th that is quite a cost area for a college. Um, and in, in conjunction with that and, as, and some other technologies, you also find that there is an annual um, maintenance charge that is, uh, that is being uh, uh, um, paid year on year. So removing that traditional, traditional way of telephony uh, also brings cost savings out. Finally, the, uh, sorry, and, and in conjunction with that, the integration of that unified comms and telephony with the rest of the Microsoft stack uh, that the college has is also an element of driving cost out of, uh, out of the organization. 
Um, normally, traditional telephony um, is difficult and sits as an island of technology and, and doesn't really add any value regarding uh, the other technologies that the college is trying to utilise. Regarding on to the students, then, so students, as we know, um, you know, young people have a different view of IT these days. They have a dis different expectation, and uh, and that is an objective of a college is to understand and meet the college's expert the students' expectations. Um, as college uh, is, is there to attract numbers and a lot of the funding is based on student numbers and you know we have to help and we have to uh, address the, 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 the requirements of, of today's students. Students wish to have more uh, agility regarding when they learn and how they learn. Um, they want to maybe use their own devices, um, you know, if they miss a lecture. They want to have access to be able to pick up their learning at another time and, and, a, and a time to suit themselves. Um, and finally, they also want increased access to the data. So not only on the college site, but any, anywhere, anytime access on any device is, is, is the expectation of young people today. Um, and Link is, offers that platform um, to, to, to be able to deliver content and deliver that collaboration to a student uh, and potentially across uh, the device that they want to bring into the college. The third conversation that I did refer to was that we've seen that colleges are aiming to generate additional revenue streams, um, you know, regarding the changes in funding that a college is now considering itself more as a business than maybe ever it was, and they are seeking new um, ways of generating revenue. So that relationship with industry and with business um, in relation to also driving employment is also a key subject that we're having. Uh, and again, how a college portrays itself and collaborates and, uh, and maybe delivers courses on behalf of industry and business is one way that uh, the, the, the revenue is generated, uh, you know, can, can be delivered using Link as a platform. So, uh, so those are sort of conversations that we're having um, um, in the FE sector today that, that, that Link uh, addresses. And just around that partnering aspect, obviously we do quite a lot of that locally with Stafford College, don't we, Mark? Yeah, Stafford College is uh, is our local college to where Ridgewell is based, and uh, and we're seeing those examples come through um, locally here at Ridgewell, absolutely. So then, just finally on that, so uh, you know, Ridgewell's uh, main conversations fall into three main camps. They 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 they, they fall into uh, uh, what we call connected business, which which is the engagement of uh, anywhere, um, uh, anytime access to data on any device. Um, we also have a, 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 an end user computing strategy which is around empowering the workforce uh, and again Link is a big element of how we empower the workforce and have that anywhere, anytime learn, um, access to data and collaboration and then finally um, uh, optimized service vision is our data center transformation and again as we've said before the, the, the introduction of a Link um, telephony um, based on standard IT that the IT department already is aware of can adopt is again a positive uh, change to the IT department. So that's a little bit about visual and about how we approach uh, IT and what the conversations we're having in the FE sector. So let's get into um, the, the, the topic for this afternoon and let's get into some details. So I'm going to hand over to James Brewster now um, and James is going to take us into uh, uh, the detail of, of Link 2013 today and the features. Thank you very much, Mark. Okay, I'm just going to take over here. There we go. Right then, so Link as a communications platform. Microsoft Link um, has been around in one incarnation or another since around about 2002 um, and started by offering things like instant messaging and presence, very, very similar to what started to happen with things like MSN um, back in the dawn of time relative to the internet. And it's expanded quite significantly to bring in extra functionality around conferencing, around telephony, and other real-time, less discrete communication methods. And it's used as a, a sort of glue layer, really, within the whole Microsoft infrastructure to kind of tie a lot of things together. It's very key to, to look at Link from an identity perspective. Unified Communications helps you to find out who you want to talk to, see whether you can talk to them, and then talk to them using the best or most appropriate method for the situation for both of you. So whether that's a phone call, whether that's an instant message, whether video, whether you need to directly collaborate on documents or present slide decks similar to how we are. Link uniquely offers a single client experience to kind of tie all of this together. And then on top of that has a rich 
um, infrastructure of integration, allowing you to bring in things like room-based video conferencing, uh, smart room systems for collaboration, traditional PBX systems, dialing conferencing, um, all from within sort of the fairly standard office device that is, you know, a, a laptop or a computer that most people have. Um, Link allows you to do things like archive and monitor these calls, keep a track of it, you know, add the compliancy and the support and, um, elements that you need to support these services. And also to, you know, make sure you've got the right fit of equipment for the people that are using it. So whether that be small portable Bluetooth headsets, whether that be IP phones, whether that be large room based video conferencing systems or smaller platforms, again, we can kind of adapt and flex all of these areas. Um, and that, I say, makes it fairly unique among the, the UC stack in terms of how flexible it can be. Um, the other rather useful set of benefits is about how you can access Link. Link's designed to be accessed from anywhere in a fairly seamless manner. So whether you are sat on your corporate network, whether you take your laptop home with you and work from your home broadband or a coffee shop or you know, McDonald's or Starbucks, maybe, whether you work from somebody else's building, from another college, from another office, but also then the people that you can talk to. So you can use Link to interoperate with other organizations using Federation. I mean, we can see quite a few people on this call are using Link themselves uh, already. So we can see their present status in the in the, present, in the participants window. Um, and we can start instant message conversations and direct um, IP sort of voice and video calls with those people if, if they want to. That There's also a number of users that have joined this call anonymously. So, you know, we don't know who they are. <laughs> In effect, um, they, they've provided a name or you know something else, and that means we can reach out to people who haven't got link and invite them, if you like, into the conversation or into the broadcast webinar, as is the case here. Uh, link clients are available for all the major mobile platforms. You can get them on iPad, you can get them on Android, you can get them on Windows devices, you can run them on laptops, you can run them on Macs, you can reach out and talk to people using things like Skype, Yahoo, AOL, and also XMPP clients like Jabber which gives you quite a large scope, if you like, in terms of what you can communicate with and who you can communicate to. Um, Skype itself has something like 39 million regularly active subscribers um, and pulls something like 38% of all of the global tele international telecoms minutes now. Um, it's used by a very large number of people on a very regular basis. And obviously we can, we can communicate directly with them using Link and using the federation mechanisms within to stay in touch with the public, students, or other people who don't have a, a fully licensed service, if you like. Okay, so I'd just like to kind of go into a, to invite Matt up to talk to us now about how we rolled out Link as a platform at North Hearts College and, and their experience around that. Are you there, Matt? Hi, James. Yeah, I'm here. Hi there. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? Good, good. I'm, I'm doing fine. Thank you. Um, so just to start off, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at North Arts? Yeah, yeah. I'm Matt Greening. I'm the head of IT at North Hertfordshire College. Um, we are um, we're a multi-site college, so we're based over three different towns, Stevenage, uh, Letchworth and Hitchin. For those of you who don't know, that's about um, 30 miles north of London. Um, and we're based over eight sites um, in those three towns, so we're a fairly diverse user population. Okay, great. Um, and have you, I mean, have you been playing around with anything outside of the area, or are you just located within North Hearts still? Well, we're we're based in North Hearts, but we've we've got um, we've got sites all over the place, and, and and we've just recently branched out into Saudi Arabia. So um, so yeah, Link has a, a reach even in uh, even in Riyadh. <laughs> so you're um, you're sort of exporting your educational um, credibility then. In that Absolutely, regard. yeah, yeah. We've opened three colleges. Um, it's it's just outside of Riyadh, and um, yeah, we've got a number of um, staff over there who are using college uh, facilities, college logons, college um, uh, link, and yeah, they're able to keep in touch with with colleagues and, and even family back home in the UK without. Uh, without incurring any um, uh, you know, expensive call costs, international call costs, they uh, they run as if they were as if they were in the office. Okay, that's that's great. Yeah, yeah. So you've got quite an interesting story in terms of how you came, if you like, to be using Link as a primary communications platform. 
Would you be able to tell us a bit about it? Yes, yes, sure. Um, I'll, I'll let others be the judge of whether it's interesting or not, but it certainly is long. So, um, uh, yeah, we, we started probably a couple of years ago, um, maybe a bit longer. Um, we've been using Cisco Call Manager for a while. We've been using that first seven or eight years. Um, it run out of support. There were a number of, it sat there and worked, but a couple of niggling issues. I think the main one really was around usability, around the address book. Um, it probably was perfect on day one. It didn't integrate well with Active Directory. So gradually became out of date, um, job titles changed, departments changed, and uh, and um, we really weren't, you know, didn't have a good handle on it. But it, 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 like I say, it did it did sit there and work. And we were looking at a cost effective replacement. Um, we got involved in a um, Janet uh, 157 group initiative around shared services, and we got some free training. And, and our network manager came back full of enthusiasm and, and set up a test system. Um, we used it within the IT department, start off with, with uh, just as IM presence, but actually used it as an internal phone system. And um, we all loved it, but um, there was not a huge push to change um, at that time. We were, um, the, the benefit really we were getting out of it was, is as a team we could do conference calls. Um, uh, we based over so many sites, we didn't want people driving into one site to uh, to, to have a team meeting because that that takes time and 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 moves people away from Nicole site where uh, where they, they you know need to be there dealing with IT issues. So um, it was it was a great tool for us uh, and we we all were very very keen on it. But um, we we didn't actually quite make that leap. We were planning a, a very steady general rollout and we had it coexisting with our uh, Cisco call manager uh, and then. Um, just before Christmas uh, last year, um, we we had a, a a failure, a hardware failure on on Cisco, and um, as I said, it was out of support and it was not recoverable. And it meant that about 40% of our staff had no phone system, um, and that included senior managers, it included public facing staff. It was um, it was um, a real you know a, a difficult situation. Fortunately, we had. Uh, Link 2010, as it was, it sat in the background, and um, we were able to very quickly uh, buy up a, a job lot of headsets and, um, and move people on onto Link. Um, so we we by default rolled it out, and, and probably ideally wouldn't have done it that way. Um, but we were equally well aware that it wasn't a you know, production quality system. It was PE backing uh, off the off the back of the, the Cisco. Um, kits in terms of external calls, and and that's that's when we got Visual involved to to come in and and do a, a production install, and and took the opportunity at that point to move to um, Link 2013. Great. Well, that's, that's all very. It's, I suppose it's one of those things that it, it's not necessarily um, the cutting edge of things, but obviously it's something we all kind of dread is suddenly being stuck in a situation where a, a very core and important piece of technology drops on us. And we're kind of left holding the, the baby, if you like. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So, how has how are you using Link within the college at the moment? You know, what what are the main sort of areas of focus? Then, what are the the bits where we see traction, where we see people using it? Frequently? Okay. The areas. Yeah, so it's it's now completely replaced Cisco. So even those um, users with a working Cisco um, system, uh, we've we've well we switched it off now, and uh, it is completely standalone. So that all staff um, have access. Um, we have got about 400 uh, DDIs, mm -hmm. um, and um, we use it in conjunction. It, it works heavily with um, with Exchange, and we're we're using Office 365. So we're it's uh, it's. Outlook Online, and that is all works perfectly together. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we, so we're using it, as I said, for, for conference calls. I know senior managers use it, like we're using this uh, now, the, the Meet Now function for planned calls, where you can send an invite that includes a link to a, a link conference call, which is secure and locked down, and only invitees can get into it, which is also available via a, um, you know, a local or a, a national uh, phone number. 
mm-hmm. so that none of us users can join in. So we, we're using it for that. We use it for remote working, as, as I mentioned earlier. We've got a number of users based in, in Saudi. I, I went out there myself in May and um, had my laptop, had a link on it, and was able to work exactly the same way as I would as if I was in the office and, and spoke to people, and, 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 and many of them would have had absolutely no idea that I wasn't um, you know, we're just based at one of the other sites. So it, it works very well like that. We've got some managers who um, uh, work from home a couple of days a week, and, and so they use Link to stay in touch. So in effect, they are, they're just on another site. Mm-hmm. And we've also, uh, the weather's started to turn, so um, every year we, we plan for snow days, and uh, um, this year we don't really have to put in much of a plan. It's just, it is in, Link is installed on um, on PCs at people's homes, so even our switchboard staff can um, can work from home even if it's snowing. So, um, so there's an enormous amount of benefits. We don't really use it in education that much we're still you know very much at the, the early stage of, of the install we, we've been working on, on um, recovery really from from the the outage um, but one one the, the main benefit we had is we've, we were able to install it on tutor PCs now we don't have never had phones in classrooms just because of the cost um, and and if there was an IT problem then the, the tutor would often send out a student to an office to get someone to call IT but now he can use IM and he can he can ping us and and, uh, and, and usually get a response fairly quickly so there are benefits in education but uh, mm-hmm. we're, we're not really using it for teaching and learning at this stage. Okay so I mean in terms of the telephony then so you're bringing the calls in to the to the link on its own uh, without using if you like a traditional PBX, are you doing that over SIP connection? Uh, we're not at the moment, but um, we we've had meetings just this week actually to to migrate and um, to a, a a link compatible um yes SIP provider and uh, yeah and that actually from what you're saying is going to be a very very straightforward um, piece of work because of the because we're on link and uh, and we're halfway there. Okay, so I mean, are you in terms of that provider? Are you looking to provide that to bring that in over your existing Janet connection, or? Yeah, yeah, we've we've just taken uh, uh, just had installed our, our secondary um, Janet connection, so we're we're resilient we're, with our internet connections, and so yeah, we're going to use our existing infrastructure for that. Okay, so I mean, in that regard, you know, you get to get rid of things like ISDN connections, fixed line connections, and move to a flexible SIP service that's brought in over the Janet internet connection, if you like. That's and that, right. that can meet all of your dial-in, dial-out requirements. Great. That's right. Yeah, and the provider we're looking at is a uh, interconnectivity with Janet, so um, so none of it hits the internet. It's it's all uh, you know within the infrastructure. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, I mean, have you got any sort of plans in the immediate future on how you're going to adopt or evolve what you're doing with Link at the moment? Um, well, it, we're going to continue to push the existing functionality. So. What we did was, uh, you know, a disaster recovery, and uh, as I said before, so the next phase is really to, to, um, well, I t- we didn't, we didn't do a lot of training. We we managed to email out a, a load of um, videos that you know, were very useful videos found on the internet, but we we didn't do a lot of face-to-face training because it was, it was, a, it was quite a quick rollout. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, we we need to do some work on uh, on, on getting the existing users um, up to speed. Make sure that it, the uh, the less keen um, are starting to you know, use use IM, use uh, conference calls and, and video conferencing um, a bit more readily in their day to day work. Okay, great. So I mean, one of the things I suppose then you'd stress for somebody going through a hopefully less urgent and slightly mm-hmm. more managed migration. Uh, would be training. It's key to Absolutely. training. One hundred percent. If if you asked any of our users what they would, um, you know, what what could go better, that was that is definitely the number one on their list. Um, yeah, I, I think ideally we we wouldn't have waited for the old system to die. It would have been a a, a phased approach. Um, mm-hmm. We we did roll out IM to uh, to all staff. It was a, a soft rollout, if you like. It went on to PCs. Um, it was communicated generally, but not really pushed. And and there were some early adopters. So there were there were those those users that that just took it on and, and just loved it. And and there's a few more that we need to to drag along with us. <laughs> Okay. And Matt, I think I think I think you'd say it wasn't the ideal introduction, but I think it just showed that, that the introduction of Link, it, it really is can be quite straightforward and, and quite easy to adopt because it's Microsoft at the end of the day. And I think I think Kevin, your architect and the team, I think I think 
took link on pretty quickly as you said and pretty successfully yeah. although not ideally in, in the in the best circumstances but it was adopted at an IT level very well uh, but I think the point you make of don't underestimate that the the, the user training the adoption is, is still a key element to make sure you do drive all the benefits that we're seeing from from this webcast really and making sure everybody does understand the full value of link I think that's always key isn't it I think that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree. I think technically it probably wasn't much more than a week or two in terms of, um, you know, on, on site uh, installation. It was it, the technical bit is, like you say, very easy. The cultural change is uh, is much greater. And I think it's interesting what you said before. I think the FE sector is also starting to see and starting to look at agile working and more flexible working for its staff. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we see that happening as well. And, and, and as, you, as we've already said, Link is an integral part of giving that staff, giving the staff the, uh, the, the flexibility and the agility to work from anywhere at any time. You know, you, I don't think a college really needs to expect a staff member to be at their desk from nine to five just for the sake of it. Uh, and Link offers that, uh, you know, is an element of that end user computing strategy that uh, that we're seeing. So, yeah, really interesting. So, uh, yeah, thank you for that. All right. Great. Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you for your, for your contribution now. We're just going to sort of move on now to uh, the next step of the slide. Yeah, please, Matt, chip, please chip in as we go. If, if, if we're saying anything or if you're seeing anything, please, uh, yes. please chip in. So. Okay, so the next set, we sort of start titled The Day in the Life of a Student, but we're going to talk over basically what is a loose demo, uh, where we're going to kind of go over some of the bits and pieces that you might do over the course of the day and how Unifor Communications would make someone's life a bit easier. I'm afraid I'm not a student, so my actual demo environment isn't strictly true, but hopefully it'll be a small jump of the imagination to get from what I'm going to demonstrate to how that would apply to, to somebody in an educational environment. <coughs> okay. One of the key things we're sort of seeing with Unified Communications is that it enables you to focus on, on work as something you do as opposed to somewhere you go. So you can work from anywhere. The nice things around this are that anywhere you can get hold of your, your Outlook inbox and see things like messages that you've got from people, Christine here who's helped organize this webcast, you, you see the people that have emailed you and have contacted you and you can communicate with them. So just hover my mouse over here and we can see that Christine's currently in a conference call until about 4.30. Um, if we want to, we can send her a message just here, just click on a button and up oh, that pops. There we go. Christine's not currently active on an IM device, so she's using a phone presumably. Um, we can also make a call, uh, so you know we have dropped this down. We can see we've got a work number, a home number. Shouldn't probably broadcast that bit. Um, we can start a video call. We can send an email. So just with this slight hover, we've gone from a name. We've now got a picture. We've got a status. Christine's currently busy. But we've also got all these one-click methods to just get in touch with somebody straight away, depending upon that status. So it's probably not a good idea to ring on the basis that she's in a call, but we could definitely get a message through, just to sort of say hello, or similarly. If Christine's not available, we can kind of open up the contact card a bit more and, and start to look at other bits and pieces. We can see that she's currently in Stafford. She's based in Stafford. What kind of time she's in, particularly useful if you've got colleagues in Saudi Arabia. Um, and you can also explore a little further. So you can find out who, Kate, who Christine's manager is, Kate in this case, who else works under the same manager, giving you a great sort of scope for very quickly discovering your organization and how you kind of communicate around you know, people that you want to talk to. So it kind of helps you to find the right people to talk to. And this is all very much based, uh, based on the presence engine of Link, as reflected by these colored bars and these colored dots. So you can see my very own contact card there, delightful staff picture there. And similarly, I'm currently presenting. I want to do not disturb. And it's not going to be very easy to talk to right now. But you might be able to find somebody else who works in the same team as me, such as Gavin, who would be able to to deal with any queries you might have. Okay, um, and that's all discoverable straight through the whole Microsoft stack. So in that case, we were demonstrating it through Outlook, but in this case, we can kind of see the, the document repository here we've got for the North Hertfordshire Council, uh, college, sorry, deployment that we did. And you can see that Martin, who was responsible for the actual installation, and myself were involved in some of the design work. And you can see next to the documents that we've uploaded in SharePoint, Again, our names, present status, and contact cards, making it very, very easy for you to kind of discover the owners and the authors of documents and how you would relate to them. 
We're going to move on to the actual link client itself now, um, which I'm just going to paste here. Just make sure we've got all this stuff uh, minimized. I was going to say, James, that is a, that was probably even more powerful in a CRM type engagement. Uh, another yeah. um, strong subject for visual these days in the EFE sector. A lot with the, uh, that we're doing a lot with is that CRM um, management of not just the students but of business and industry. Um, mm -hmm. But again, when you bring in the power of link and the integration of link in a CRM type uh, environment of being able to escalate to a call or an email from within a CRM package, it's very powerful. And the productivity gains and the efficiencies, again, as part of that integration is, is quite compelling. Well, one of the difficult things traditionally about things like CRM and telephony integration has been the reliance on complicated computer telephony integration solutions that rely on the PBX signaling to applications. Um, these are often based on really old protocol standards that are quite archaic putting them out of reach of a lot of places that aren't effectively large-scale contact centers with big budgets. Link, as a soft client, is able to use things like normal SOAP and RESTful APIs to communicate with web applications, meaning that you can communicate in context from the Link client with very little actual involvement um, in terms of the mechanism. So you can look up numbers based on things like the CLI that's coming in, but it's on the PC already. So it's very, very easy to kind of reference those numbers through to different areas. Um, you know, there are there are top software tools out there that enable you to integrate a link with Microsoft CRM very easily to look up contacts through CRM to to back reference basically straight away with you know very little sort of interaction and provide you with that fairly informative screen pop. Um, so walking through the actual link client here. So at the top we've got a status bar. We can kind of put in what's happening. You know, we can leave a message, and those are visible to anybody that start looking around. Uh, as a good example, if you set an out of office message, then people will see that as your status within Link. Uh, you've got your photo and your status to here, your present status. You've got your name, which is collected from Active Directory based on the formatting there, so it's easy enough to drop in nicknames, other presentations, or whatever. Uh, we've got your current status, which you can select here. Now, there are four sort of main core states available, busy, do not disturb, and away, and you can move between them. Some of them are done automatically, so Available is the normal base state. You are both happy and able to communicate. Busy usually reflects being in a meeting or being on the phone. So you are happy but unable to communicate if you like. Do not disturb means leave me alone. I'm, I'm, I don't want to talk to anybody right now. Um, I'm presenting something similar. And then the various forms of a way if you like. So be right back is just intended to be a bit more informative. You know, just pop to get a cup of tea or something similar. Off work is using computer but not working. And then appear away is if you just want to set the status on your client to away. Away will happen automatically if you lock your PC. Busy will happen automatically if there's a meeting in your calendar or if you answer a phone call. Um, and then if you've been fiddling with your status all day and you want to change it, you can press reset and it will go back to whatever your default is based on things like your calendar and the rich integration you get with Outlook as a calendar. You can also set a location, which includes things like the time zone. This can be semi-automated within an environment, or you can set it manually, externally. Just to, again, if you're in a, a situation where you've got eight or nine buildings, it might be helpful to let people know where you are, if they want to come and meet you, or if they want to just try and I am or talk to you. So moving on to the, the rest of the main client window, we've kind of got the search bar here, so we can put in names of people that we want to talk to, and we get loads and loads of different people that we might want to talk to. Here, so in this case, we can see John, who is a network engineer that I know I've been working with recently. We can we get a favourites list that kind of lets us see the different people that we want we might want to talk to. So Helen from our support team, Ian, who is my boss, and Martin, who's one of my colleagues that I work with in the UC practice. Uh, we've also got some uh, different options up here. The top one uh, is actually an automated robot that we can talk to. We might have a go at talking to that later. Uh, so we can use that for an element of self service through our business support. It'll help us route a call through to an individual, but allow us to interact with it, you know, say, through instant messaging. Within the group list, you can pin either manual groups with different sort of members internally, or you can pin exchange distribution groups, such as our UC messaging practice here. Um, so again, you can very, very easily sort of pre-populate and populate these with people that you actually want to talk to, people that's going to be helpful to get in touch with. You can group the con. The, uh, your contacts by status, who's online, who's away, by relationship, so how well related you are to people in terms of friends and family, work group members, people you work with very closely. 
the rest of the people in your organization and then people who are outside your organization. And these groups all get different access to this information. And then the last box is new. So when somebody adds you to a contact list, they get flagged in here. So you know who's, if you like, added you, who's watching your contacts and things like that. So you <coughs> available. Okay, and that's effectively the basis of the link client. So to start a conversation with somebody, we can just double click on them. And here we see Brian, and we can start a message, and we can send Brian a message just like so. And then Brian can respond as and when he wants to. If we want to then escalate to a call, a video, or share some share a document with Brian, we can do. Sorry, the video will have been a bit jerky there over a, a desktop share. Um, yes, yeah, so and then we can do things like share our desktop, share a specific program such as Word or Excel, upload a PowerPoint, just like we do for the majority of this webinar, but also do things like share a whiteboard, set up a poll, or use a question and answer session. Okay. So is everybody okay with sort of instant messaging and presence aspects there of the link client and how you can can relate that? Um, if anybody's got any questions, obviously we've got a Q&A at the end. Uh, just to add another couple of features then, we've got the conversation history element. This is a, a block where you can see everybody that's sent you a message that you've missed. We can see a list of all the calls that we've had and the people we've talked to over the course of the day. And then just an aggregate of everything. We've got the phone box here where we've got things like voicemails that we get in place and where we've got an actual dial pad that we can use to, to place telephone telephone calls. And please, if, if, we, if anybody would like to see something specific, please put it in the, uh, in the comment bar and we can... Please add into the comment bar box. And then last but not least, we've got the meeting section, which is effectively just the meetings section, your agenda for today, if you like, in terms of meetings drawn from your Outlook calendar. So, I mean, as a client, Link uses both Exchange and Link-specific information to sort of aggregate all of this information about you and communicate to your colleagues how willing and available you are to communicate, and then also gives you the tools to do the same thing so that you can effectively communicate and collaborate with your colleagues quickly and efficiently. Um, you know, we use it heavily for things like document reviews, for passing information around, and also for seeing what other people think about stuff without necessarily having to get in touch with them on the phone, travel to meet them, or otherwise. Okay. As we said earlier, the link client's available both on a PC and also on a mobile. So most of the functionality that's available here, the instant messaging, presence, the voice, the conferencing, I can access from a mobile phone as well. Uh, just yesterday, I got a good 15 minutes of uh, VoIP audio walking around talking to one of my colleagues I was down in London um, that was a rather nice experience all on 4G with wideband audio nice happy quality experience but similarly you know when abroad you can skip between Wi-Fi and things like that to be able to still make calls still be contactable without getting into international roaming and things like that and through the integration with Skype most of the communication mechanisms that are in place within link instant messaging presence audio and soon to be video are available between a Skype user and a Link user. So the, the sort of standard model we're starting to see is that the students can use something like Skype combined with um, their um, online uh, mailboxes provided by Microsoft using that same Microsoft Passport account to be able to communicate with staff who might be using the Link combined with an exchange online um, offering, if you like, to be able to send instant messages, emails, and talk to each other if necessary. Um, that's as I say, it's great when you travel in, it's great when you're abroad, um, it's great when you've got Wi Fi, and obviously, this is all IP, there's no real meter charge to most of it in most cases. Right then, I'm just gonna get back onto the slides now briefly. So from a student's perspective, hopefully you can see that we've given we've got a number of tools available where we could kind of work through how you could check over your schedule for the day, whether or not you've got classes, lectures, how you could have some of those lectures online, similar to how we're doing now, where we can talk to people, we can broadcast content, we can show everybody what's going on. We can also record it to make it available after the fact. So if you're running a training session, then you can do that after the fact. Okay, this helps to engage students and empower educators, as we've got on the slide deck, using such things as maybe a virtual classroom approach. You know, we've seen people have been able to sort of spread um, lecture environments across rooms to deal with things like oversubscription potentially or not having enough large rooms. 
Um, we've also seen quite a lot of benefit for this in terms of after school help and the ability to collaborate with maybe tutors or people that are available to work with students who might need extra help, if you like, without either of them having to physically meet up. Combined with something like SharePoint, this provides great access to things like um, course content, but also enables collaboration. You can use elements like uh, links persistent chat functionality to provide shared meeting spaces where people can collaborate or talk about ideas, documents, coursework, or anything similar. Um, and I don't know if anybody's aware, but Skype have recently started announcing a translation service built into the actual client, and that sort of thing's available, you know, again, using the Microsoft UC stack. Within the actual organization, again, the benefits mainly, you know, we see a lot of benefits around operational efficiency in terms of staff being able to communicate with each other and collaborate when they're at home, when they're at work, if that's the case, when they're working through the evening, potentially how that can help when you've got multiple or international campuses, how you can use it to reduce your meeting overhead by moving a part, you know, a portion of your meetings to online so that rather than everybody hanging around and waiting for every meeting, you know, people can kind of mix and match and choose whether they're online for some or whether they're physical for others. It's not something we can ever totally replace the physical meeting. It's very important to kind of keep in touch with people. But similarly, if you can kind of reduce the frequency and keep down some of the insistence, can make everybody's life better uh, and yeah typically we see that the, the benefit as well around remote interviews the ability to actually talk to people without having to get them to travel up and down the country and as we start looking at you know being more competitive about how we pitch for talent and pitch for recruitment that's a big benefit recruitment costs can be massive you know you need to make sure you meet and talk to the right people before you actually invest too heavily in any of this and as Mark alluded to, the ability to work from anywhere is great in terms of things like snow um, or in terms of events that might floods. Um, you know, if you've got any kind of as fresh as flu or other medical <laughs> incidents where you might have a situation where people are looking to avoid too much contact, having decent communication tools in place and having a flexible remote working environment can act as a good um, I suppose disaster recovery scenario in those areas. Okay, so just moving on to ways that we see about being able to kind of save money within the link environment. Um, as Mark's already said, we've got high traditional PBX costs and maintenance. We've got uh, the potentially expensive consultancy costs that might come around things like traditional PBXs and the closed environments a lot of them work within. Um, and we're seeing a lot of benefit then about the fact that Link is a Microsoft application. You can consume part of the functionality from the cloud um, just using Office 365 using licenses you've already got. And you can kind of move into a situation where um, you know your own staff are in a position to kind of manage, scale and maintain a Microsoft based platform that they're already familiar with and well trained on. Uh, the great thing with Link is the desktop integration. You know, we've seen the SharePoint integration, we've talked about the CRM integration, and we've seen the, the, the Office integration. And all of this kind of provides a truly unified platform from which you can integrate communications with your business process. Okay. Brilliant. Great, thank you for that, James. Um, so, just take over as presenter. That's brilliant. So, yeah, really appreciate that, and hopefully that's um, managed to cover both the technical aspect and the, 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 the business value and the feature aspect that we've tried to do. So we're going to hopefully leave enough, enough time at the end to be able to ask any questions. And for those that uh, wanted to get a little bit more technical and talk about infrastructure requirements or that sort of stuff, we've got a bit of time at the end to uh, for James to answer those sort of questions. It's difficult to, to, to pitch how technical or that these, that these webcasts need to be. So if I can just uh, start to wrap up then. So, I mean, what what, what are the next steps? How do, how do we start to consider link as a, as a technology and, uh, and and how we assess the value both commercially um, and through the, the the added integration with the current infrastructure so um, Rizwal has many services from our UCM messaging practice um, and they range from um, something uh, like a, a quick start so we can put a quick start um, 
proof of concept environment into an establishment which allows a, a, a college to, um, to, to, to do a proof of concept to understand the capability and, and look at uh, adoption and training and other areas. That's typically a seven day engagement. Um, we also do uh, architectural design sessions. So if a college would like to just um, have a day with a consultant to whiteboard the, the, the features and start to tease out the, the benefits that they would see um, from a college, that's, uh, that's um, a one day engagement. Um, and both of them really would lead towards uh, design and planning. Design and planning, as with any project, is the first real phase to, to, to seriously considering um, uh, a, a link voice uh, deployment, um, a link just design and planning is typically around the five and six day duration and what that will do, that will give a college a, uh, an implementation approach, it will give a high level design, a low level design and a budget um, assessment that, that the college can take that back in to their senior management team to understand, you know, is that a viable project, is, is the business value going to stack up and potentially request further investments. Um, following design and planning, then if that is signed off and agreed, then we go into the standard visual del project delivery methodology of build, test and deployment. Um, so one thing I wanted to highlight here before I pass on to Chris who's going to quickly give a summary of, of, the, of the element of support. Um, so as I mentioned at the start of the call, we would like to offer um, all attendees on this webcast a free of charge half day assessment of what a unified what a universal communication strategy could mean for that college so it's a half day engagement with a consultant from our uc messaging practice and what it will do it will it will go through at a high level um, uh, the link and the feasibility of introducing link voice into the college it will go through the features and benefits and using a template a standard uh, total cost of ownership template we will also be able to give the college a high level um, business justification of the, uh, of the potential cost savings and commercial value that a link installation um, could offer the college. Um, and we can also, because of the, the, wide, the wide capability of visual, that can also extend to what does the integration with their messaging, with your messaging platform, with your CRM platform, with your collaboration, with SharePoint, um, how you may be extend that investment you've probably already made in Office 365. We can also cover those type of subjects as well as all part of the same engagement with Visual. Uh, and, that, and that's probably one of the values that Visual does offer uh, a, a customer. So, so, so that is sort of where we'd see next stages. So uh, Chris, do you want to say a few words about how we support um, Link and, uh, and our approach to that? Yes, please, Mark. Um, so that's a reactive service, like I said, um, eight or six in the day, just kind of responding to phone calls or a premium support, uh, whereby we proactively monitor your link service and make sure there are no issues. And this is a 24 seven service, or it could be um, support in the cloud. So using link, link in the cloud, our Office 365 uh, cloud managed services front ends, any service request process uh, you may have with Microsoft and make sure your questions and queries are dealt with in a timely manner. Or if you want something a bit more bespoke at your college, um, we can come in and do a needs assessment and kind of do a wider support package and, and manage, this, manage the, um, the link for you. Um, so I suppose why is support important? Um, so for Israel, it's not just keeping the lights on, but it's managing and optimizing your IT investment. So um, it allows your in internal staff to do more strategy focused work and it, it reduces the cost of IT, um, the operational cost that is. So, um, and it also gives you greater hours of cover. Um, so with that, Mark and everyone, um, does anyone have any questions to either Mark, James, uh, Matt or Kieran or myself about link or support? Yeah, thank you, Chris. Actually, in fact, we've got one already. So Adrian, um, yes, to answer your question, Visual can support dynamic CRM. So yes, we'll be, uh, Chris will be happy to, uh, to contact you after that to understand uh, your support requirements for that. Though. So yes, we, so we have a wide coverage on support as well as we do as, as project work. So yeah, as Chris, uh, Chris said, so um, do we have any questions for uh, uh, all the uh, presenters on this webcast? We've got five or six minutes to cover that. So any questions for 
James, uh, regarding the technical elements, or would you like to ask Matt Greening on any further about his experiences? Um, please uh, feel free. In fact, we, I suppose we could open up the mics, I suppose, if people wanted to talk. Probably better to do it on a request basis. Um, if anybody wants to, to have a chat, give us a shout, and we'll open up the mic. And don't be shy, guys. It's a really good opportunity to, uh, you know, whilst we've got uh, Matt here on the phone and, and Rizal, it's a really good opportunity to, to ask questions first hand. So, Chris, uh, Chris Fry, is there an operator's interface? The Link 2010 attendant console is still fully supported with Link 2013, and that provides you with a full screen application that allows you to sort of see the number of calls you've got on hold gives you a full area of the screen at which you can sort of drag and drop and IM users to be able to transfer back and forth. Uh, there's also a third party ecosystem that offers things like shared communal help desks where you can have four or five attendants working on a shared large scale inbound call if that's the kind of environment you need. At, uh, at North Arts College we don't use uh, an interface, we don't use either of those products. We um, we have a response group for um, for the we call it central inquiries, but for uh, for reception and and that's uh, yeah that is sufficient. Okay, so Matt, we've got another question here about uh, whether or not you plan to use this for Feltag delivery at all. Uh, definitely looking at it. Yes, yes, we haven't got anything in place yet, but yes. And um, Scott, so just in regards to the voicemail question, Link currently supports Exchange Server as a voicemail platform. It works from 2007, but the best integration is currently 2013. You can use Exchange Online. Um, I think it's in the sort of A3 and A4 plans. You actually get voicemail access, so you can basically just fire them off into the cloud and let the internet deal with your voicemail, and it will arrive back in the user's mailbox. I've actually got an example here that I will just bring if anybody wants to see. Um, just give me a second. Okay. No more questions. Anybody wants to grab quickly? Um, We've got a question from uh, from Richard. Um, I, I'm I'm not sure there is much integration with Moodle. Um, it it sits. I can probably fill in a few more bits and pieces. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm just losing what. I'm what on the Moodle question? Yeah. Yeah, I can add a little bit on that in a minute. So um, there's not any direct integration with Moodle, but there is integration uh, integration through the browsers. So you can use a standard JavaScript module to be able to build in things like the presence interfaces if you want to, as long as you can relate them back to a searchable email address or SIP address within the user's own link client. That integration is done on the client itself, not on the server. So it, it's fairly straightforward to kind of basically present that information alongside any web page that you've got, including Moodle. Using uh, Internet Explorer as a standard browser, you also get the link uh, browser helper, which enables you to um, basically recognize phone numbers and put a little button next to them so you can just click on them and dial through the phone number. Um, and there's also an API available that lets you put um, Skype call controls into uh, web pages, if you like, with, you know, one or two lines of code. And the local user's Skype client will effectively pick up the ability to just click and then be routed through to something like a response group as Matt alluded to, which is a, a way of handling calls like similar to a hunt group within Link. So you can effectively provide PSTN or Skype connectivity from a public website. Just back onto the voicemail. So this is an example of voicemail I got from Stacey, who actually handles some of our uh, managed services and sales within the business. And you can see here that I've got kind of the play controls here so that I can basically, you know, play the message back, adjust the volume, mute it, and things like that. You can see who it came from, Stacy in this case, how long it is. Um, and we get all the contact details to actually be able to get back in touch with Stacy. so her work phone, her mobile phone, and her email address. Okay. Well, just, just, just to ask as well, sorry, it's Kieran here. Um, I've seen before where, where um, it can actually pull the text from the audio and put it into the mail for you. Yes. Um, how, how does that work? Um, so there's a transcription engine supported with Exchange on-premise, but we've recently moved to Exchange Online, and transcription is not currently available in Exchange Online. Okay. Uh, okay. Also, a little hit and miss with UK regional dialects. It's very, very predictable in the US and in Spain, and in places where they have quite a low regional variance. But given the, vari the difference between, say, I don't know, North Wales, Manchester, Liverpool, and Cheshire, and the fact that they're only about 30 or 40 miles apart, it struggles a little to pick up the differences and nuances in everybody's voice. 
Cool, thank you. Okay, cool. Uh, so, uh, question, uh, question for you again, Matt, uh, if we can. Paul's got a question for you regarding uh, um, the use of traditional IP handsets or link or, um, or soft phones. Uh, it's predominantly uh, USB phones, USB handsets. So it's the Polycom CX300. Uh, we've probably got about 500 of those. Where the, the disadvantage of those is that they're only logged on when the PC they're connected to is logged on. And so for where, where we require like an always on phone, we've got, there's a, a Polycom 600, which is a um, Ethernet pass through uh, phone. So it, it, it will sit and run over PoE and, and be on all the time. That can be logged on as a user. I mean, we would recommend having a mixed estate approach for audio in that regard as well. So where users have got a heavy telephony requirement, I think giving them an IP phone is, is usually the best way to deal with that. Um, some people get on really well with soft phones. It depends on what you do for a living, and it's worth understanding those elements before you go into a full-scale voice replacement. Okay, so any more for any more? Uh, that was uh, some good questions there. Brings us pretty much bang up to the end of the session. Yeah, we can't have got that any better. So, well, great, great stuff, guys. I think um, you know, I think it's a really, uh, really great webinar today. And um, you know, thanks, Matt, for for joining and in, in your time. And thanks, Rachel, as well. Um, you know, and if anybody does want to follow up, feel free to reach out to me, um, to Mark and the team. Um, and I'm sure Matt's happy to, you know, to take any questions if you think about anything later as well. Absolutely. Um, we can, you know, we can provide those details for you. We've got the webcast as well. So, you know, do feel free to, to share it around with other colleges. You know, very important that we, you know, share knowledge and, um, and, and try and help each other out. So, you know, thank you very much, guys, really. Yeah, thanks, for that, Kieran. And from my, from our behalf, can I also extend our thanks again to to Matt Greening? It's 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 so appreciative, and we value so much our customers supporting us on these webcasts. So, Matt, we're really appreciative.